Welcome to the introduction to recursion. What is recursion? Recursion is when a function invokes itself. What does that look like? Let's write a function self invoker. Well, we would just invoke self invoker. This code right now doesn't really do anything special. In fact, it's just going to keep invoking itself over and over and over again, and it will never stop, which brings us to the important or one of the important points about recursion, which is that you have to stop the recursion at some point or else it goes on forever, right? So there has to be some logic in your function that, for instance, if some logic is true, then we return. Return meaning we stop. And at that point, our function will stop invoking itself. So this looks a bit weird right now. Let's dive into this. Why would you even want to write a recursive function? Sometimes a recursive solution to a problem will be more elegant and perhaps easier to read, although maybe that's debatable if you like recursion uh, or if you don't like recursion. These recursive solutions can be easier to read than an iterative solution. So what does iterative mean? It just means when you iterate over, uh, iterate over something, right? When you go over a list one by one. So um, we could have a function called add range where it takes in a number and we basically add from one all the way up until our number right and how would we do that like let's say we want to add one plus two plus three plus four plus five if five is our number and then we return whatever the uh, sum of all of those things is so we would say uh, we would start let's start our range at one We just write a for loop here. Let's do this. Let's do i plus equals. Hmm. Let's actually start with a sum um, as zero. And then we'll just do sum. And I wrote this backwards. It should be sum plus equals i. Because what we'll have is we'll start with i at one and it will add uh, one to zero, and then one to two, and then two to three. So let's see if this even works. At the end of this, we would return sum, right? I'm gonna add some spaces a bit, make it a bit easier to read. Of course, we have to declare our variable here. So if I invoke this function, let's do, ret uh, let's do add range of five. Uh, let's do three because it, it would be what we're expecting to see is this. We're expecting to see one plus two plus three, right? So one plus two equals three plus three equals six. So we're expecting this to be six. I want that to happen. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here and um, let's see. Will it let me add a breakpoint? That's the big question going to let me go through this. There we go. All right. So, oops. Well, this gave away our answer here that our function isn't quite right yet. Uh, but let's add our breakpoint at the top here. There we go. So we start with our sum is zero and we add sum plus equals I. So zero plus one, right? So now our sum you see on the right side of the screen is one. And now we're going to do one plus two is three. And now, ah, so I only reached two because we, our ending condition is that I has to be less than num. So what if we do this? What if we change it to be less than or equal to num? Let's try that. So looking over here, I guess I don't need to make it that big, but we add sum to I. Cool. We started with zero, we added one, 
one plus two is three. And then finally, three plus three is six, and that's what we wanted. Finally, we're gonna return our sum. Nice. All right, so this would be what we consider an iterative solution to the add range function, adding, adding numbers from one to your target number. So from one to three, if you add all the numbers together, they give you six. This is an iterative solution, meaning that we iterate to achieve our answer. So going back to recursion, you might want to write a recursive function when it makes more sense recursively. We're going to write this add range function recursively, but you may argue whether or not the recursive solution is easier to read, but sometimes the logic is just a bit more elegant looking. Okay. Uh, another thing that you might want to consider recursion for is when you need to write a repetitive task um, that maybe can be broken down into subtasks. So this is a really simple example. So I actually don't see any problem with just iterating and adding some plus equals I here. That's totally fine with me. But when there are more and more uh, complex examples, maybe recursion will be a bit uh, simpler to read if you write it that way. In this situation, uh, not sure. Let's try the recursive solution. So what am I going to do here is I'm going to write, I'm going to write a new function. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to comment everything out in here and we're going to write add range, but we're going to make it recursive. Okay. So the first thing that we need is we need a case. We need some logic that will stop or terminate our recursion say, Hey, we're going to stop. So the, one of the easiest ways you can think about how to write this case, which people call the base case. One of the ways that you can think of, how do you write the base case? Well, if our function is to add all of the numbers from one to a certain number, your base case um, could be, it's kind of like you have to think, when, when will your function always return the same thing? And it's, kind of a, it's kind of a vague way to say it, and I don't, I don't really like that wording, but basically, if you think of add range, you know, if we put two in, it's gonna add one and two, and it's gonna give us three, right? Or if I put in, I don't know, five, it's gonna add one plus two plus three plus four, plus five, right? It's going to add all of these numbers. But what happens if you just put in one? What do we expect to happen? Well, if we put in one to add range, we want to actually just return the number one. There's no computation that we have to do here. We don't have to add anything together. It was kind of like that for loop that we wrote before, um, where we started at i equals one. And if if the ending condition is one, well, it's that loop is only going to run once. So we will just have one. This could be a base case for us. So it's kind of like if our num is one, then we're just going to return num because num is one. We want to return this number. Um, so right now, if we invoke add range of one, let's see if it works. Let's try that. So I cleared my console. Let's try running this guy. Um, do I have breakpoints? I don't want any breakpoints. I still have breakpoints. Let me reload. Try this again. Yep. Okay. I took those away. Okay. Add range of one. And you can see right here, it prints out one. Perfect. But what happens if I, um, what if I do add range of two? What's going to happen? Well, num will be not equal to one. So we don't have any other logic here. We just print out undefined because when nothing else happens, a function returns undefined. So what we're going to do here 
is we're going to define what do we want to do when our number is not one. Well, if our number is not one, then let's let's think of what happens if our number were um, were two. If it were two, I would want to add one plus two, right? Well, how do I get the number two? Well, the number two, or actually, to in total, I want to have three because I'm adding this base case plus two. So if I put in the number two and it passes this base case, we will end up actually returning like num plus one, which is just one plus two, right? So if I put two in here, this should give us three. One plus two or two plus one is three. So let's try invoking that. Yeah, and it gives us three. But of course, this is not um, a recursive solution and it doesn't deal with any other numbers except for one and two. So this one here, we're actually already dealing with this. What if we were to add a call, an, an invocation to add range with our num, but actually we just subtract one from it. So what I'm basically what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to say something like this, where at the bottom, and you'll see what I mean by bottom in a second, but at the bottom, I want to invoke add range with two, okay? And then a little bit further up here, I'm gonna say add range at two. This add range at two, what it does is it adds the number, it adds two here on line five, it adds two plus invoking add range of two minus one. So what that does, we're just gonna write that out. Add range of two minus one is, is one, right? And then the very, let's say the top here, add range at one, what does add range at one to? Well, if I pass one into add range, it enters this if condition and it just returns num. It actually stops here on line three. It doesn't do anything else in the function, it stops. So we get to add range of one and this actually just evaluates to one. So what, so what exactly happens here when we get to this one? Well, whatever was, um, so we return the number one, meaning on line five, this add range of one, this all of it evaluates to what it becomes the number one after this returns. So all of this becomes the number one, and we already know that we had two, so two plus one is three. Like right here, this one, all of this evaluates to the number one. Um, two plus the number one is three, and this this all evaluates to to uh, to three, like that. And that's actually that's actually how it works. Um, and if you think about it, this will well. Let, let's actually not even think about it. Let's let's look at the at the call stack which is something that um, programming languages use to store every function invocation. With JavaScript, we've talked about execution context before. Execution context is maybe another way to say call stack. Basically, every time you call a function, it stores information about um, like, hey, what, what is the value of each of the arguments at this point in time? And I'm just gonna, let's just demonstrate it right now. Let's throw a breakpoint on this if conditional, actually let's reload, throw a breakpoint here. Please work, there we go. All right, so with two, we can see on our call stack, we have add range because it was invoked on line eight for the first time. Now I go to return and we actually don't, exit from this function. We don't return from it yet. We have to invoke, we, we add num plus add range. And so you can see on this call stack, it actually, I don't know if you can tell, but it added another uh, add range on top of our previous add range. Our previous add range, let's see, scope. Our previous add range had a num of two, because that's the number we started with. 
But on our current add range, the num is 1, because we passed in 2 minus 1, which equals 1. So now we're at our if conditional. And you can see what happens here with a return statement is you actually do something called pop off the call stack. The call stack is kind of like um, it's a data structure and you can imagine a stack of papers that when you put papers on top of each other, when you want to take a piece of paper off, you don't take it off from the bottom of the call stack, which would be this very first ad range or even anonymous under it. Um, you take papers off the top of the stack, <laughs> the top of the stack, my voice kind of cracked there. So we end up popping off this ad range and whatever is returned from num becomes, or this ad range num minus one evaluates to what is, whatever is returned when we finally pop everything off. So let's pop it off, returns, and now you can see that we have num was two and add range of num minus one uh, returns returns one, right? And one plus two is three. We can see our return value is three. So keep going. And down here at the bottom, it's, there's, this is not very much fanfare. It's not very exciting, but yeah, it returns three. So believe it or not, our function is actually going to work for basically any um, numbers that we pass in that are positive. I say that because we're not dealing with negative numbers. This, our condition doesn't deal with whether, you know, what if we put a negative one in? Well, hmm, I don't know if this, I don't know if it's going to work the way that we want it to. But let's not worry about negative numbers right now. Maybe you can write a version that deals with negative numbers. So I've got uh, something here just to show you really quick wrote a little quick assertion function, which is basically just um, proving that two values equal each other. What does this have to do with recursion? Well, it doesn't really have to do with recursion, but it's an important concept that I just want to bring up real quick um, that's going to help us prove that our function works uh, for many different numbers. So we have this other function called are these equal? And this function takes in one value expected and another value actual. And it basically just prints out a little message and says, hey, these um, values equal each other or these values don't equal each other. So for instance, um, we want add range of two to equal six. So the way that we would assert this is we would say, are these equal? And this, once again, this is just a little function that I wrote. Um, you can write your own, uh, make it an even better message than mine. But we say, are these equal? And we're going to pass in add range of two. So that should equal six, right? And we're going to pass in the number six, because that's the number we want to see. So let me delete this line 15. And let's just see what happens if I, if I try this, are these equal? Whatever add range of two returns and six. Let's try that out. Um, Oh, I still have my breakpoints. I should take those out. Ah, false. Three doesn't equal six. Interesting. So the number um, we're we're actually expecting uh, we're expecting the number six, right? Why are we not getting that? Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and try it out. Why are we getting that number? So we've got our number two. Oh, we are not expecting the number six. That's why. You probably caught this before I did. My gosh, I should think about these. Um, we're expecting the number three, right? Because one plus two is three, not six. Six would be for this. Are these equal? Add range of three. This one should be six. Let's comment this out for a second and just try, are these equal? Let's try this again. True, three equals three. Okay, and just to show, you already saw that that worked, but just to show if I add a different number like five that's wrong, it'll uh, it'll say, hey, false. Three doesn't equal five. Cool, so we wanna see three here. And getting back to are these equal, if we do add range of three, we wanna, three, we wanna see six. 
because what we ended up doing is we will do add range of three. So we would do three plus two plus one. So three plus two is five plus one, which should equal six. Let's try that, see if it works. True, three equals three and six equals six. Oh my gosh, that was a mouthful. What did you learn about today? You learned about call stacks, how you pop things off the call stack. You just need to imagine this, and actually here, here it is, this is the call stack. The call stack, the top of the stack is this one, and when it returns, when you pop it off, then it is, uh, the number one is kind of used in place of this function call. And this function call now evaluates to one plus two, which then this is pop popped off the call stack. And by, by the way, what is this? Well, we call this a stack frame, a stack frame. The stack frame of two plus one is popped off. And finally, we return two plus one, which is three. So awesome, you learned about call stacks, you learned about base cases, and I guess if you want to define this case here, we would call this the recursive case, where we recurse on a value. Um, a good way to think about how to write your recursive case is what I did, which is think about the case right before your base case. So I didn't start with the number three. I started with two. Well, technically I started with one because that was my base case. But then I thought, hey, if I put the number two in, I know I only need to recurse once before I hit my base case. So what number do I need to add to my function? What or what logic do I need to do to invoke right before I hit my base case? And that's a maybe one strategy that you can think of to figure out your recursive case. But a lot of times, honestly, it just takes it just takes practice and looking at other people's good recursive code. I am, that is something that I'm always doing is trying to find out new ways to write recursive functions because honestly, they're pretty interesting. Um, let's really quick talk about the drawback to recursion. Well, one drawback is this, first of all, this is our recursive function. Don't let anything else, don't let these breakpoints um, confuse you or this assertion function. But uh, our recursive function here, you can see that I actually think that this is maybe easier to read than our iterative function with the for loop. There's there's less code here. It's it's less. Uh, I don't know if it's less confusing. If you don't if you're not um, familiar with recursion, then maybe the iterative version is is less confusing. But I think there's less code here, and there's definitely something to be said about um, a more elegant way to write this. Um, but so that could be one advantage or disadvantage. If, if you understand your recursive solution, then great. It looks awesome. If not, then just write the iterative version. Another reason that you might want to stick to writing iterative versions of your functions, if you, um, are trying to make a decision is the recursive function actually takes up more space than the iterative version. Um, and what does that even mean? Well, every time you invoke a, rec a function recursively, remember every time you do this, like if I invoke it with the number um, five, I think this should be 15. It should be, f the output should be 15. Um, so we get here, we go to, if I invoke this function, um, See, add range, is this doing add range of two? Yeah, it is, okay, that's fine. If I go to this add range of 15, check out my uh, check out my call stack over here. And I'm gonna do this, there we go. Check out my call stack, which is all the way down here. It invokes add range, it's gonna invoke add range again, and add, see it's already added three add ranges, and then another one, one, two, three, four add ranges, and then another one, and this is when it's going to hit its base case, right? Because num is one. One, two, three, four, five. That makes sense because I put in the number five, right? But 
this actually adds, this actually takes up computer memory. So there is JavaScript stores its uh, stack information. The call stack is stored in memory. Each frame adds additional, uh, is using, using up additional space. So that actually stores memory and you have to take that into account. Like, hey, maybe my recursive solution is actually taking up a lot of space um, when you invoke it. The iterative version of this function, the one that we wrote before with the, with the for loop, if you can remember that one, it was kind of a while ago, but if you can remember that, it actually doesn't take up any additional space. There's no, we don't have to make any objects or arrays or anything like that. We just iterate through and add numbers together. That, that doesn't take up any space. So actually, if you wanna think about, and this is kind of like getting in the weeds, but if you wanna think about performance, I think the recursive version of this add range function is actually slower it ta at least it takes up more memory than the iterative version. So there's good things. It's elegant and simple and it can, um, well, simple looking sometimes, and it can uh, show logic maybe in a more um, high level way. And at the same time, recursion can add space to the call stack and it can add up quickly if you have a large number of times that you're recursing. So Try to think about the drawbacks, try to use recursion. Sometimes you can just use it as a mind exercise to try to think, hey, how would I write this recursively? Um, but don't, don't uh, push yourself too much with it. Recursive is, re recursion is more the kind of thing that you want to know that it exists and you wanna kind of know maybe a couple little patterns with it, but it is not something that you're gonna be writing. You're not going to be rec writing recursive functions every day in your career. In fact, I'd be surprised to hear um, that developers write a recursive function more than, you know, honestly, more than, I don't even want to make up a number. I was about to say more than once a month, but I don't even think that would be the case unless you're studying recursion. It's just good to know that it exists. Um, because there are actually some built-in, you know, JavaScript or other programming languages have built-in functions that are uh, actually, they're written recursively, as in the way that they are uh, programmed is recursive. So for instance, like the, the function, I'm sure you guys have seen, or you may, you may have seen json.stringify, where, uh, where you stringify something, like if I throw in a, like an object and I say it has a property hello, with the value of world. Um, JSON stringify will print this out as a string. And JSON stringify is actually implemented recursively under the hood. So you don't have to, you don't have to implement JSON stringify. It's already there for you, but maybe it's interesting to know that, um, that that's how it is. It is actually implemented behind the scenes. Anyway, there's a lot more to recursion. This has been a really fast, uh, super brief overview. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you're curious and want to learn more and that you have a very nice rest of your day.